So he came back a little later than six weeks. He came back in January 2013, and he told me that since Christmas, yeah, he could smell again and he could taste again. And uh, I was very surprised, actually. Uh, I was actually very skeptical. I was not expecting to, uh, uh, to see that. I was super surprised. That's why I present this here. So he said since Christmas, he could smell and taste. Um, there were occasional... Um, Episodes where um, he had anosmia attacks again, but overall um, uh, that thing was uh, seemed to be resolved at least since Christmas, since about four weeks. And he had then done, um, in spite of his uh, uh, re of his uh, resistance and his skepticism, he had done all the treatments according to protocol. And um, uh, yeah, obviously was very happy. He told me that he did enjoy, you know, the Christmas, uh, the Christmas uh, goose and uh, uh, was very euphoric. And uh, I was still very skeptical. I thought, okay, maybe, you know, it's just another episode. And, um, uh, but it obviously uh, uh, wasn't. And I told him to come back in, um, in two to three months to recheck on his condition. Also seit Weihnachten konnte er wieder riechen. Er hat mir das im Januar berichtet. Ich war total überrascht. Ehrlich gesagt hatte ich bei so einem schwerwiegenden Fall, ich hatte gar nicht die Hoffnung, dass der überhaupt jemals wieder riechen kann. Und ähm, war dann total baff, als er mir erzählt hat im Januar, wie lecker ihm die Weihnachtsgans geschmeckt hat und dass das quasi sein größtes Weihnachtsgeschenk gewesen ist, dass er wieder riechen konnte. And, um, und um, er hatte, hat berichtet, dass er noch einige Attacken gehabt hat, eine, eine, so einige anosmische um, Attacken. Und ich war immer noch relativ skeptisch, vielleicht ist das einfach nur eine längere Episode äh, eines Wiedergewinns seiner Riech- und Schmeckfähigkeit. Und ähm, äh, habe ihm dann empfohlen, einfach erstmal alles genauso weiterzumachen in der Intensität und sich dann in einem Vierteljahr wieder vorzustellen. So he came back in April and he told me there was a complete restitution of his sense of smell and taste, um, which was comparable to the condition before it actually started. So he regained the same status to before 2001, which was not perfect because he's a long-term smoker and has a COPD, etc., etc., is taking a lot of medications, which also have a tendency to change taste and smell. But he regained... Uh, um, or he went back to the same status of smelling and tasting before these episodes started. And there were no uh, attacks between January and April. And he did take all the, um, uh, he uh, had taken all the herbs that I uh, prescribed him and had also done all his um, uh, self-treatment um, and the Hara Vihara recommendations at home, also actively involving his wife. Um, I then recommended him to stop with Pipali, so to stop the, I would say, Pilu Ama Pachana. Um, the Yashti Madhu, to, uh, um, uh, we also cut down in particular because he's a patient of arterial hypertension. And you, I would also always recommend you, in particular, if you prescribe it in higher dosages, to at least stop Yashti Madhu for some time because that can lead, ultimately lead to... Uh, to actually an aggravation of arterial hypertension. But we stopped that, and we also stopped the Lekana Trifala Gugulu. Um, no, 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 that we continued to give. Trifala Gugulu we continued, and Arjuna and Brahmi we also continued in the same dosage, which is sort of a mild to moderate dosage. I personally have this tendency, and that is just my way of treating. Of treating. I like to use uh, small dosages. <laughs> So I know there are several people here, if they use uh, extracts, for example, they like to make use of the full dosage, which would be more um, uh, two capsules twice daily, or even more than that. But I like to I actually prefer to take more herbs and reduce the dosage of the individual uh, herbs. So I told them to come back in three months. Also, als er dann im uh, April wieder da war, wirklich äh, aus meiner Sicht total überraschend, dass er wirklich eine vollkommene Wiederherstellung seines Geruchs- und Geschmackssinns äh, berichtet hat ähm, und auch, es auch keine Episoden eines Geruchs- und Geschmacksverlustes mehr gab. Also er war wirklich zwischen Januar und April vollkommen beschwerdefrei und hatte den Zustand seines Geschmacks- und Geruchssinns wie 
vor Beginn seiner Beschwerden 2001. Der war damals nicht perfekt. Er ist ja ein langjähriger Raucher auch und nimmt zahlreiche Medikamente, die auch seinen Geruchs- und Geschmackssinn verändern. Aber immerhin, also er konnte wieder riechen und schmecken. Und es ähm, äh, hat mich wirklich sehr fasziniert, weil ich, wie gesagt, gar nicht damit gerechnet habe, diesen Zustand jemals wieder äh, zu erreichen. Er hatte auch wirklich sehr fleißig, sehr klar und sehr konsequent die ganzen Empfehlungen aus dem Bereich Ahada Vihada durchgeführt, seine Frau involviert, die Kräuter eingenommen und ich habe ihm dann empfohlen, Pipali abzusetzen. Pipali als ähm, Armapachana, in diesem Fall äh, Pilo Armapachana ähm, Präparat. Pipali sollte man im Übrigen auch ähm, spätestens nach einem halben Jahr immer mal pausieren, also auch nicht dauerhaft ähm, äh, Verschreiben. Das gleiche gilt für Yashtimadu, also Glyceritza glabra, also Süßholz, weil das, ähm, wenn man das länger nimmt, auch zu Blutdrucksteigerung führen kann. Deswegen das auch immer mal pausieren. Trifala Gugulu als Lekana weiter und Arjuna ähm, als Rasayana und Herztonikum und Brahmi auch als Dauertherapie seiner, äh, seiner Nerven- äh, und Gehirninvolvierung auch weiter. Sich wieder vorstellen in zwei, drei Monaten. So, um, last time I saw him was actually a couple of weeks ago, and he said unchanged um, status of uh, his main complaint. He can smell, he can taste. And, um, the, you know, discussing this case in terms of his uh, nephrological, uh, uh, pulmonological, and cardiological treatment that he is receiving aside all of this would take too much room now. We can discuss this um, outside if you like. Uh, there is a lot of stuff to tell also, but uh, for this primary ENT complaint, um, he has, uh, uh, we've now seen an episode that lasts for more than eight months with a complete restitution of his uh, sense of smell and taste by Ayurveda. So much for this case. Is there any question related to this case or any comments maybe or critics? What do you think of Arjuna? Of what? Uh, Arjuna. What do I think of Arjuna? Why did you choose Arjuna for him? I took Arjuna for him because it has a, um, uh, it has a uh, cooling property and in particular because it has a Hridya property. And um, uh, he has this uh, um, ventricular extrasystole and in hypertension. So it's eventually an attempt to also in the mid and long term reduce the amount of, uh, of anti-hypertensives. And also the palpitations um, are troubling him. So, I mean, Arjuna is a rasayana, and it's a soothing uh, herb. And um, uh, looking at the datu kshaya condition and an ojo kshaya condition, I think Arjuna is a good uh, is a good option. It's not the main. It's not the main uh, preparation, but uh, I thought there were good reasons to choose Arjuna. How high were the complete costs of the whole therapy, including all the consultations? Mm -hmm. The consultations are always for free. He eventually got the herbs reimbursed by the health insurance company. And um, I can calculate this. Let's calculate this. Because in the private practice, I would say it was not more than 1,000 euros. With all the manual therapies, two hours and So, yes, we can smell again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just to know. Um, yoga, Ahara, Nasya, manual therapy. So we are actually very cheap intentionally. We uh, because we want to sort of make maximum maximum use of our position in the camp scene in Germany and you know, to propagate Ayurveda. So we actually offer quite cheap treatments. It, it will be much more expensive if you go into the field. So for a session, uh, like a 70 to 90 minute session of manual therapy, it's 70 euros. For Nasya, about 40, 45 euros. For a dietary, uh, um, individual dietary session, it's 60 euros. And for yoga also. So that sums up to 1,100, 1,220, 1,000, uh, uh, 340,400? Did I calculate that right? I don't know. Maybe something like that. Yeah? Okay. Huh? Uh, the health insurance company paid for it. Right. 
Right. But we started. But right. But we started in 2013, in 2012, and we started in 2013. And um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So he made use of two budgets, and I think he got five preparations for approximately uh, thirty to thirty-five euros uh, each in the dosage. I used it, so one zero one, not two zero two. So you have about uh, hundred and fifty euros, um, and uh, now in 2013, now he has to pay for it. But, you know, it makes up a minor amount of the whole amount. So at least partially they were reimbursed. What dietary changes did he make after he had found? Well, we, we advised him to, um, to implement a Vata Pitta reducing dietary regime and to reduce uh, the AMA load, the external AMA load. So which is not very, uh, which is not so trivial, you know, if you're trying to treat a uh, Dhatu and Ojokshaya case, and you still want to um, do Ama Pachana also by Ahara, which is not uh, which is not easy. But um, if you want more details, um, ask Elmer. He can uh, he treat he did the Ahara Vihara with him in detail. So and I also have the file with me. So if you want to go into detail uh, history, um, I can get the file and it's in my apartment, and we can go through it. And when, when are we finished? Now, right? At one? You want to go through another case or discuss more in this one? May I just ask one? Yes. <laughs> All these therapies are done in your clinic? Yes. Yeah. Right. So, one, one quickie? A quickie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quickie. <laughs> okay. So, this is actually not a quickie, so I'll skip that one and uh, we'll do the... The third one, which is sort of uh, an open case, so you can also resonate about it. So I would call it more energy and quality of life. So is it okay if I do it in English only? No? Okay. Ja, können wir das einfach so machen? Ich, ich rede auf Englisch und Sie lesen es auf Englisch. So, otherwise, you know, we're sort of running out of time. So, I have a patient here, uh, Mrs. SS, uh, 37 years old, 165 centimeters tall, 58 kg heavy. Uh, she is separated from her husband, uh, or was separated, now she's actually divorced, doesn't have any children, and uh, she works as a... Arzthelferin, how would you call that? Assistant. Assistant of a medical doctor. She's also from Berlin. She would consider herself a Buddhist. And as for her hobbies, she likes to cook, she likes to read, and she's a flexitarian. So uh, she has, uh, let's say, a new term. I like that. For people who occasionally eat meat, but who say that uh, to the largest extent they're vegetarians, you can call them flexitarians. So it's actually a, a technical term right now. So you might want to uh, uh, put that into your dictionary. <laughs> so uh, that was the, uh, her general uh, history in January of this year when I met her first. So as for her um, main complaints or conditions, she is a uh, carcinoma, uh, a cancer patient. And in spite of her young age, relatively young age, she's actually already seen two carcinomas. And... Uh, one uh, la laryngeal, would you say laryngeal in English? La larynx. A larynx carcinoma and a cervix carcinoma. And she was, comp she was complaining in German, she said absolute uh, exhaustion, absolute fatigue uh, in combination with massive uh, sleeping disorders, and irritable bowel syndrome with a tendency for diarrhea, so an IBDS and lymph edema in the both upper extremities and lower extremities due to the fact that she had, uh, I'll talk about this later, she had surgery both in this area and the neck area and also in the <coughs> abdominal area relating to both of her uh, uh, cancer conditions. She was also uh, complaining about diffuse body pain all over the body and uh, about um, sort of labile, um, general mood, so she would have a tendency for depressive uh, mood changes, etc., etc. 